Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's all dark. There it is. We just got back from taking the kids and going to the gym. Now we're gonna eat some breakfast. Brad felt like eggs, so <laughs> we made eggs. <laughs> Huh, babe. I do know how to use Tabasco sauce though. He tried to make them with no oil. It was Careful. just a mini. Oh, just a mini. Just stop it. Make fun of me. And then we have shakes <laughs> too. Make fun of me. And then we're going to make coffee. And then we're going to study because we have a question to answer tonight. In our class. In our marriage In class. In marriage class. Because we're so good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to. We've already kind of like gotten and discussed um, the answer and all that stuff, but now we're just gotta yeah, write it, it down, put it together, get organized. Excuse me, I gotta get my. Excuse me. Oh, look at it. it's bigger than my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing. We're gonna eat real fast. We're starv. I'm starving. Like I went to bed hungry last night, like craving a steak. I want. I probably just need protein, so that's why we're like proteining it up for breakfast. All right, what are we gonna? Are we gonna watch something? Or are we gonna? Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch our show. Mhm. One episode. See you in a little bit. Yeah. Let my second one. loaf of bread ever yeah, rise. I just made it. Said, oh, my ninja. Yeah, uh, I don't know how I like the ninja compared to the, the KitchenAid. Feel like the KitchenAid might have did a better job, but. That's what I'm doing. Brad and I got our stuff done for tonight for our little talk. Pretty excited. I think it'll be good. Hopefully people will, you know, get something out of it. Hopefully I can record it for you guys. Let's see. I'm going to text my sister and see if she's able to make it tonight and then she can help me record it for you guys. So, see you in a little bit. We're going to get kids having Lexi's favorite dinner tonight. That's why we need bread. Brett's watching something about Michael Jordan. I was trying to catch your face. MJ. His MJ. My MJ. Did music. It's alive. It's alive. It has risen. My bread is all risen. So now I'm going to turn the oven on. Get it in my loaf pan. Go pick up the kids from school and get it in the oven. I'll be back. I'm from school. Do you have homework? No. Is your room cleaned up? Nothing. Is your room cleaned up? Oh, is your laundry put away? Ooh, no. Aw, no Madden 17 till that's done. It'll only take you a few minutes. Go do it. Huh? Okay, hold on. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Wait, what? No, nothing. <laughs> Go do it. Lexi went to go check the mail. I have a vinyl order coming and I am gonna attack this disaster that's left over from harvest. This is Lexi's favorite dinner. Christmas, Christmas. She it got happened guys, Halloween is over. I got my Christmas blend with some peppermint mocha and my joy cup. Christmas is here. Christmas is here. We got Thanksgiving, it's kinda just stuck in the middle. But you know what? I ain't it's delicious. Don't be mad at it. Do we have a sports headband? What's that mean? No, no more tickets. I don't know what a sports headband is. I have a pink headband. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even show you guys what it was. It's Italian sausage. Bow tie pasta with Alfredo out of the jar. Because that's how I roll. What happened? I said I make the Alfredo out of the jar. Caesar salad. Mommy, homemade bread. Yeah. yeah. Some people make it. Like from scratch, and I, I opened it. Jar. You like it? Is it so good? Oh yeah. Hot bread looks better. Yeah, it's hot. Butter. Let me get some more butter. Let me get some more butter. Little butter. Little butter. Not too much butter, just a little butter. Try it. I want to see you try it on camera. You have to make like the mmm, like commercial face. Mom's bread. Yeah, do it. Nothing better. <laughs> Homemade. You gotta make like an added edit out of it. Why not? You'd like make a like a romantic song. 
Oh, you just ruined my clip, man. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> All right, let's make daddy a plate and then get cleaning up. Tonight's church night. But Toby's not going. Toby, I said you could either preach a sermon or listen to a sermon, but you can't go on a Wednesday without getting something. You listen to a sermon. I might make him listen to two because he got done with that too fast. John read the letter eight. And number eight. <laughs> Mom, the yeah, he paid me. Why not? Who's one more? You need Jesus. I got Jesus. You need a lot of Jesus. Hmm. He does. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to church in a tank top. I just was hot all day making stuff and I want to get my shirt dirty. Okay, I'm gonna make Brad a plate and get eating. For couples, and the questions that have come in have come in and anonymously through the gold box and there's a little piece of paper you just write the question and fold it up and then we're the only ones that see it we pray over it and then we give it to one of our counseling couples so um, pastor brad and mandy all right okay so i'm going to start this off with a scenario for you guys it's been a very busy week, and how many of you has it already been a very busy week? Yeah. <laughs> um, tensions are already high in the house. One of the children didn't do the chores they had been asked to do. The husband comes to discipline, but the wife oh it comes to discipline, but the wife decides that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. The wife then, in front of all the children, has harsh wor harsh words for her husband, and a disagreement erupts. So our question is. So what does a husband do when his wife disagrees with his leadership and is disrespectful in front of the kids? And this could apply to anybody. So if there was kids um, in the question, I mean, this could be finances, it could be anything. I'm going to pull Pastor Arnold oh. feel like we made it. Sorry. So, 1 Peter 3, 1 and 2. Wives, in the same way you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. Um, last week, we all talked about submission. Most of the questions had to do with submission, and I kind of, no, I don't kind of, I know this has to do a lot with that. And so I'm going to give you like a quick, for me, what submission means. Um, I have had a hard time with it because I do come from single mom, a grandma who raised, uh, you know, strong women. So when I first came to Lord, I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 a lot of my years. So anyway, the Lord gave me a picture. And it was of me and Brad, and we were walking a trail, because um, actually we used to walk a lot together. And we were just walking and talking and, you know, holding hands and just having conversations about life. But the trail got really, really narrow. And there was only one that could fit at a time. He had to go single file. And that was the time that he had to blaze the trail in front of me. And I had to fall in line behind. And if I would have struggled for that position, one of us would have gotten hurt. Because there was like a big cliff. So that's kind of how I've always worked through submission. That yes, we're going to walk and talk. We're going to fellowship. We're going to come to agreements. But there will come a point where he has to leave me. And I have to let him. Or we're both going to fall. So that's my quick little yes. submission. And then the second part of just kind of carrying on for the husbands. In 1 Peter 3, 7 says this, In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in this God's gift of, of new life. Treat her as you sh should, so your prayers will not be hindered. Now I think about that, I mean, in, in the way... We are as, as spouses, um, husbands and wife. God ordained the man to be the head and the wife to be his helpmate. The Bible says here that she's weaker, but she's not inferior, right? Yeah. This is a partnership, not a dictatorship. That's right. right. You know, so we, we partner together. Yes, you're the head. We talked with Chris and Shelly talked about it with their finances last week. You're the head. I mean, Chris makes the final decisions. 
most of us make the final decisions. If I be very transparent, I don't make financial decisions. It's easier that way. It's worked for 15 years. Why well, try and fix it? <laughs> hey, what can I spend? Okay, great. Thanks. See you later. Um, and, and so just in that, I mean, in that, there is a part where we as husbands, we're going to make some decisions. If we make those decisions by ourselves without counsel from our wives, and I'll just be honest, if your wife is a godly woman, um, she is probably more in tune with the Holy Spirit 80% of the time than men are. Just God designed it that way. In my house, that's the way it works. It's like God speaks, and then my wife speaks, and I'm like, were you listening to me pray? Like, what's going on? So there are, there, there are partners. They come alongside of us. And so in the question where it talks about um, your leadership, uh, if I can just speak from a, a younger, I'm 36, but I don't know the age of this person. So thinking about that, I mean, if there is that struggle, talk about it before there's a major decision. Talk about it not in the midst of the moment. Does that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. Have a discussion before there's an eruption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, David and Saul, how many are familiar with that story? Yeah. yeah, so this is a real life submission illustration that the Bible gave us. Maybe not husband and wife, but definitely a leadership. Right. And um, I don't know what to say, right? Yeah. yeah. So David was anointed king, young age. He ended up becoming Saul's son in law, and Saul still <laughs> sought to kill him. Um, and David had multiple opportunities to take revenge, which we all would think was rightful. He was defending himself, whatever, but he never took it. He always um, uh, honored Saul's anointing. So sometimes we might not agree with the leadership, but that does not mean we get to um, dishonor the positions God has put before us. So 1 Samuel 26, 17-25 Saul recognized David's voice and called out, Is that you, my son David? And David replied, Yes, my lord and king. Why are you chasing me? What have I done? What is my crime? But now let the lord the king listen to his servant. If the lord has stirred you up against me, then let him accept my offering. But if this is simply a human scheme, then may those involved be cursed by the lord. I don't want to be cursed. (laughs) For they have driven me from my home, so I can no longer live among the Lord's people. And they have said, Go worship pagan gods. Must I die on foreign soil, far from the presence of the Lord? Why has the king of Israel come out to search for a single fleet? Why does he hunt me down like a partridge on the mountains? Then Saul confessed, I have sinned. Come back home, my son, and I will no longer try to harm you. For you valued my life today, but I have been a fool and very, very wrong. Here is your spear, O king, David replied. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord gives his own reward, so do good for... Uh, sorry. The Lord gives his own reward for being, doing good and for being loyal. And I refuse to kill you, even when the Lord placed you in my power. For you are the Lord's anointed one. May the Lord value my life as he has valued yours today. May he rescue me from all my troubles. And Saul said to David, Blessings on you, my son David. May you do many heroic deeds, and you will surely succeed. Then David went away, and Saul returned home. So David had the chance to kill him. He didn't. Saul saw his wrong, whether he acted on that. That's a whole other part of the Bible. Um, The Philistines finally killed Saul, and David still honored him. In 2 Samuel 21, So David obtained the bones of Saul and Jonathan, as well as the bones of the men of the Gibeonites, no, sorry, the men of the Gibeonites had executed. When the king, then the king ordered that they bury the bones in the tomb of Kish, Saul's father, in the town of Zela, in the land of Benjamin. After that, God ended the famine on the land. So he's blessed because he honored mm-hmm. Saul. Yeah. Right. And, and thinking through that, and it's a lot of scripture to intake, but thinking yeah. through that, um, even though Saul was wrong, Saul was wrong. So just in, in, in the ways that, you know, your leadership, husband might make a wrong choice. Spouse still honor the head of the house. Because blessings and curses come. When there's disunity, there's, there's a difference. So when there's the right order of God, husband, wife, then there's, there's honor there. But if it kind of, you're trying to go side by side and get, get out of balance, that blessing is missed. Now, 
I want a blessing for our family. So I, that's why we think about it. Once again, conversation. Conversation is the biggest thing to help with that. Um, I think about this. Um, James 4.10, the New Living Translation says this, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up, uh, lift you up in honor. Um, and I think, for me, as a man, um, and you guys struggle with security, insecurities? Do you guys have any insecurities? And so as I think of this question, I'm just being honest and transparent, as I think about this question, there's been times for me as the leader of my own, I've lost my group. I've made a decision where to be disciplined or um, leading the kids, leading my family. I, I've made a mistake. And there could be a time where, you know, if she comes at me in that, I'm going to feel friendly. My leadership is great because here's here's I'm trying to lead out of insecurity. I'm leading out of my insecurity, and my spouse is going, "Really? That's not how you're supposed to do that." And for me, this is where I look at it. God's already dealing with me on stuff, right? And the moment I feel threatened as a leader of my home, when I'm feeling inadequate, and my spouse is going, "In front of my kids," what's the first response? When you're responding out of hurt, now it's, well, I guess I'm a bad dad. You can beat them all into that. Have fun with that, right? That's just taking the order of the home out. And so, um, in that, everything we have, humble people in the Lord. Give it to God. If it, if it, it is, man, I'm struggling to be the leader of my home. Because she's always making, you know, poking at me. Well, God, I need you to speak to her. This ain't going to work if we're already got Vision, this works a whole lot better. If you go to God and then He let Him speak to her, um, your spouse, um, you're going to receive a nice conversation. I can probably promise you that because God is all about order and He's all about honor. He's all about making sure that honor in the home is not only for God but with each other. So, yeah. And for girls, um, you were probably you know, so you can't sit back and like, you're the leader, go ahead and lead, and then like, oh my gosh, you're doing that all wrong. You know, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, come alongside, and there has been times where I'm like, okay, babe, what can I help you with? Like, let me, let me help you, let me, um, what can I do? And be respectful of whatever you said. That thing right now, I just need to pray through it, or, you know, whatever. Not, well, well, I think if you did this, you know, I have to try to, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and if you really are um, worried about leadership or something that's going on, pray. I know it's such a passive thing we say, like, just pray. But don't really pray. Um, God can do in a moment what you can imagine for months about. Like, God can just, like, yeah. and it's changed. So, and then it's changed in harmony with the whole. Uh, a couple more things here. Uh, Proverbs 18 21. This is, this is a cool one to, for me. The tongue brings death. And life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Right? And so just thinking about that, um, wives. I'm going to talk to the wives as a husband. We love to hear how wonderful we are from me. If you don't think I'm a great leader, begin to speak it in. Um, begin to speak the thing. He did something good. We talked about it last week. She's not here. Uh, we, he did. He wanted this, but he did this. Champion. Talk about that. Produce life into that. Speak life into that moment. Hey, I didn't get the dozen roses that you bought me one. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I love this one. You know? I wanted a dozen. You brought me one. I'm so grateful for that. You thought of me. Thank you. And then that begins to produce hope. Now, there, there's like this macho cheese man thing that goes on. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, hey, I know that our kids are acting crazy, and I like the way that you got them to calm down um, and discipline them in the right way. Thank you. That, that means a lot to me to really be careful about our kids. Out there. You know, uh, think about it that way. Just, just speak life into those moments. If you wanted to be a great leader, speak it into them because you're, you're going to see. This level of guy go from, oh, I see as a dad to, I'm an okay dad. Hey, my kids are different. Doing a great job. And you're going as a, as a wife, you're going, yeah. 
children honor yeah. you're, you're setting that tone for honor yeah. you're, you're letting them see what honor looks like um, if you're dishonoring you're showing them how to dishonor right. I watched today uh, I went to pick up my son from school the guy said hey hey don't don't cross the street use the crosswalk and the guy was like oh yeah 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 and he kept walking I, I thought to myself it's exactly this why do we expect something from our kids that we're not going to do so if you want your kids to be honoring model it for them That's right. model that out yeah. So, yeah. 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 Last one, First uh, Peter. This is our last scripture for First Peter three nine. Uh, don't repay evil for evil. Don't re- retaliate with result, res- insult. Sorry, uh, when people insult you, instead pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and He will grant you His blessings. Amen. And I think about that. You know, just yeah. if she comes at you, don't go back at her. Go to God. Amen. Go to and God. vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, it's done. You guys just watched it. It's over. It's It's all done. What'd you guys think? That was it. I was so nervous. I was shaking and sweating, and my face was red, and I didn't say half the things I wanted to say. So I'm sure you guys will get a couch time or chair time because of that, because I want to say it. You gotta get it out. Gotta get it out. It's wisdom stored up in here. It's right here. But let wisdom. my nerves get me. Let my nerves get me. Get the best of you. It's okay. I repeated myself, as you know, several times. No, I wasn't bad at all. You did a good job. You big boo, babe. You big boo. I thought you killed it. Mandy got repeated, as you know. Oh, you didn't see that. They like referenced her, her point. This point that she had. This nugget that she had. From Smiling. Holly Furtick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, man. Whatever. I'm just, I'm just repeating. They, they didn't, they didn't highlight Holly Furtick. They highlighted, as Mandy said, <laughs> as Mandy said, as Mandy cheater. has said. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Look mm-hmm. at where we are. Gas station. Cause why? Because we oh, always need gas. Always the clock back on Sunday. We get to, it's Benny Hinn Sunday. Sunday. Fall back. back. Finally, man. I've been waiting. For Ever, forever. See, see, exactly what we talked about in yesterday's vlog. We're talking about one thing, and then all of a sudden, Lexi gets loud, and it's something <laughs> totally different. I, you know, everyone tells me that even at school, like they'll be having a conversation, I won't be listening to them, and then I just will like try to, and I'm thinking in my brain, and then I'm like, oh my god. Oh, look at that dude's dad. Well, the election on Tuesday. What? The election's on Tuesday. Who will oh, right. Who? Oh my god. Who will we be? What will we have? Will we have Trump? No, that's will we not have Hillary? on Tuesday. Yeah, it's the 15th, I'm November 15th. Back yeah. On a Tuesday. Bye, Felicia. Hey, like, subscribe, join the tribe. Have a great night. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Peace out. I have to go home and make safe on here. My phone's going to die. Okay, good night. Good night. We went on, no problem. No problem.